Eric Young now joins the list as number 700. The 700 WWE superstar to complain about the product after he had leave the product and how bad the environment had been. Rey Mysterio reportedly worked extreme rules with his contract expired. Rey Mysterio has still not come to a new contract extension with WWE. We're going to talk about that. And something that I just added into the video because I saw it earlier. Pat McAfee used to be a punter in the NFL. Now in the interview with Adam Cole, he stated he was one of the best punters of the decade. I don't know where he got those stats from. But he took small jabs at Adam Cole throughout the interview. And at the end, Adam Cole actually blew up. Now, was it real or was it not? A lot of people say it wasn't. But if you look at the way that Adam Cole acted, it seemed like it was very real. He threw the microphone stand down and began screaming profanities at Pat McAfee. We're going to talk about all three of these topics. Wrestling, wrestling, and then some. Hit the like button, subscribe, push this video out there. Ladies and gentlemen, we have got some things to talk about today. Three topics. We're going to talk about Rey Mysterio's contract, about how he wrestled while he reportedly was not under contract, and how the extension or, or the works of his contract uh, reportedly as of today are coming close to a new deal. Eric Young ripping WWE, and he's a, one of many, many superstars who have left the company and blasted them on different podcasts. And we're going to talk about the heated podcast between Adam Cole and Pat McAfee. Now, uh, first things I, I want to say first, we're going to jump right into this Adam Cole topic first. The topics that are, or, or excuse me, the podcasts that have no correlation with WWE and are off of WWE's programming, meaning that these are podcasts that are run by people that are either former wrestlers, don't work for the company, are generally real. Things like Talk is Jericho and, and certain uh, podcasts like that are generally real because they talk about real life topics. They talk about how they broke into the business, the struggles they had along the way, and it's pretty much for the most part 100% real. Now, it's different with Adam Cole because he's still employed by the company and he doesn't want to say anything that is controversial. Um, but this podcast right here, the end of it, really caught me off guard. And for someone that has been watching wrestling for as long as I have, it got me to the point where I legitimately questioned what, what I was watching was real. Uh, I don't know the history between Pat McAfee and Adam Cole, but apparently uh, I did watch the, the, it was 14 minutes long. I'm, I'm assuming the goal of the podcast was to be a little bit longer, uh, but clearly that didn't happen. Uh, McAfee was taking intentional or unintentional digs at Adam Cole throughout the show. Um, he said a couple of things that, that rubbed me the wrong way, and I could sense that as the podcast went on, it began to get a little bit more awkward. McAfee criticized Cole for his size at one point in the interview. That's where it actually got very hostile. Um, and he also stated that Adam Cole, or, or responsible for most of his success, was the Undisputed Era. Now, we all know that's not true. Adam Cole, with or without the Undisputed Era, is a very, very talented superstar. Did the Undisputed Era make Adam Cole feel more important? Yes. But did the Adam, is the Undisputed Era responsible for his success? No, they're not. No, they are not. And we all know they're not. I know you're just trying to do your job and that's fine. Uh, this is where Adam Cole kind of had a salty response. He said, I know you're trying to do your job and that's fine. It took some time out of visiting my family to come into your show, but you're being a total dick right now. Uh, McAfee said, I find it ironic that of all people to say, I surrounded myself with really great talent and that's why I succeeded. Of all people, what a punter, you being on a team that literally did everything, you having to kick a football every now and then all of a sudden you feel like you're really important. Of all people to say that to me, I surround myself with super talented people and that's the only reason I'm successful, you're a psycho. Then, Cole eventually stood up from his seat to approach McAfee and this is where the profanity laced tirade began. Now, if this was some sort of effort to build a feud between Pat McAfee signing a WWE contract, I don't think it would have happened with all of these F-bombs dropped. Cole literally flipped it. I think the last words that were said before Cole flipped, he said, uh, something your success is pretty cool because after all you're just a small guy now That's obviously a dig at Adam Cole's height and size Adam Cole from what we all know is one of the best wrestlers in the world No matter what promotion he's on he's been literally one of if you think of the the history of NXT You think of guys like Finn Balor you think of guys like Kevin Owens Sasha Banks Adam Cole is the equivalent to 2017 on NXT, Johnny Gargano, all those guys that really shaped NXT up to what it is. Cole got up and said a giant F-bomb to McAfee. He said, 
I come out of here, take time out of seeing for my family to do your stupid effing show. F you. Somebody approached Mac, or excuse me, somebody approached Cole as if this was a real angle, and he got a nice shove by a bystander. He told him to relax, chill out, and he and as he stormed out of the studio, said F you, and then McAfee uttered it back in a alarming rate because McAfee looked very confused. Was this marketing? Was this real? When I first saw this, I thought it was real. The more I watched it and heard different people's aspects of it. Could it be a setup? Yeah. I just didn't expect Adam Cole to jump out of his chair like that and to flip out to the, to the standpoint of where he got up out of his chair and said, F you, F this, F that. That is what really caught me off guard. I did not expect Adam Cole to to um, go to that standpoint to where he, he would do something like that. If something like this was predetermined and they were taking jabs throughout the interview, okay, I get it. But for Adam Cole to stand up like that, and if you watch, go, it's 14 minutes. I know if you're watching this at this point, you can watch that. Go watch the the um, the Pat McAfee interview with, with Adam Cole and... You can develop your own opinion of it, but that's just what I'm saying. That's what I saw. That's what I witnessed. It seemed like 100% real. I have no desire for Pat McAfee. I've known, I haven't watched his podcast that much. I know he has a huge following. From a football standpoint, he was a very good punter. All-decade team? Mm, I don't know about that. So, where they go from here is interesting. What Adam Cole says or does next or what Pat McAfee does next is interesting. I don't know if he has had a podcast since Adam Cole has actually um, done that. It seemed legit. If you watched it and if you and if I'll tell you this, if you watched it and you didn't know who Adam Cole was and you saw that type of reaction, you would probably think it was real. Um, I'll keep you updated on that situation. And that that's that. So it definitely caught me off guard. Uh, the title of this is actually from Forbes, the little article I read. It said that Adam Cole trends as Twitter debates legitimacy of heated Pat McAfee interview. The next topic we're going to talk about is Eric Young. Eric Young joins a list of 755,000 superstars as superstars that have blasted the company after their departure. Now, Eric Young rips WWE. This is from Bleach Report. And he says the system is broken, a disaster in how it's organized. We've heard a lot of superstars over the last five or six years say the same exact thing. Newly signed, excuse me, articles being obnoxious. Um, it says here, it says here, newly signed Impact Wrestling star Eric Young aired his grievances with WWE during a radio interview Wednesday, three months after getting released by the company. He appeared on Busted Open Radio and discussed the biggest issues he encountered while in WWE. And he quotes, the truth is a bunch of guys that have left there have talked about this and we don't need to go on about it but the system in WWE is broken and it's hard to get a word in even when you're doing nothing it feels like you're fixing people's mistakes all day there was no creativity they want everyone to do the things the same and be the same and bump the same and sell the same and there's millions of rules those change daily it's really hard to understand what's going on and why it's going on the system is flawed and I would say that to anyone there I would say it Vince McMahon I would say it to Vince McMahon himself there's no creativity, and they want everybody to do the same thing. And that's one of the things I said was a problem for many years, is that they have a system where they want everybody to act and replicate everything the same. Instead of using these different superstars and maximizing on their potential skills, they want everybody to act a certain way. It is almost like you're in a line going out of a classroom and the line leader moves and everybody else follows. There's no room for creativity. And I've said for many years, there is absolutely no excuse. WWE has the strongest roster out of any wrestling promotion that this company sucks. There's no excuse for it. I mean, we could go on all day about wrestlers that have said things after the departure. Now it's one thing for two or three wrestlers to be upset, had a grudge against someone, but we're seeing all of these wrestlers coming out and saying the same exact thing. No creativity. What else does he say? Is there more on here? Uh, the NXT part went great. I was treated well. Hunter and me worked very closely on the development of Sanity in the group. I really felt like I had a say in what went on. Obviously not final say, but was listened to. At the time, Sanity was one of the top acts in the whole company. I could be put anywhere on the card and be utilized in a good way. 
Then we transitioned to the main roster, and I mean you and everyone knows how that went. It did not go well. Sometimes you fall out of favor, and it's nothing to it's nothing you did or didn't do. I never changed who I was. I'm not going to. That's not who I am, and I'm not a political person. Never have been. Young called WWE a disaster in how it's organized and added. It's hard to love wrestling in that kind of environment. Well, if that's how you feel it is as a wrestler, imagine how we feel as fans. Watching it. Watching it when we get to the point where we know these wrestlers that are held down have potential to be some of the brightest acts on television and we see them held down we see them put we see them put in storylines that don't make any sense we see them lose the guys they shouldn't be losing to and that's just how the system goes he says young's disappointing run on the main roster came to an end in april when he was one of the several wrestlers released by the company in an effort to cut costs during the coronavirus pandemic. His 90-day non-compete clause ended this month and made his return to impact last week in a slam anniversary. I'm not a TNA fan, but I will tell you this. I heard very positive things about slam anniversary, and it is one of those shows that I will have to go back and watch at some point. The 40-year-old was part of a fatal five-way main event against Saw Eddie Edwards beat Young, Ace, Austin, Trey Miguel, and Rich Swan. It's uncertain how former Impact World Champion will be utilized now that he is back where he first made a name for himself in the wrestling business but he seems excited for the opportunity to get his creative juices flowing again. I will tell you this. You don't have to look at this to tell you how Eric Young feels. The whole idea of NXT, well, when NXT first started, it was a disaster. We all know that, okay? They had these, the, the concept of pros and rookies was great. They had all these people coming in, doing these competitions that were just abysmal to watch, made no sense, then it became more of a wrestling product. Triple H took over, and I would say about 2014 when, 2015 is when it started to really pick up. And then once 2015 ended, it hit full steam. We saw things that made sense, and what baffled our mind is that it happened for an extended period of time where the main roster was on, okay, let's say they're both on the same level. This is the main roster, this is NXT. NXT was doing this, the main roster was doing this, and then it went like this. NXT was doing everything right. They were developing characters. They were creating storylines. They were giving us wrestling that we wanted that we were not getting on the main roster. And you could tell Sanity was great in NXT. And the second, I honestly can't even tell you one match that Sanity had on the main roster. I really cannot. I would love to, but I cannot do that for you because they didn't have a match on the main roster that was exciting. They were a victim the team that was hit the hardest for me when they made the transition from NXT to the main roster, no hesitation. The Ascension were one of the hottest tag teams in all of wrestling on NXT. The second they hit the main roster, just like that, they were not important. They became jobbers, they became thrusted onto main event, which is a show that, I hate to say, nobody watches. And they were victims. Sanity was put in matches, not important. And that's one of the things I feared about with Matt Riddle that, knock on wood, they haven't screwed up yet. Matt Riddle's actually been interesting. Now his promo work on SmackDown is terrible. He says there's no creativity. All of these wrestlers that are, are being, or are coming out, are telling you the same exact thing. So why should I have any reason to believe that they're wrong? We have seen over the last five years the select favorites that WWE has gone with, some of them with all with talent. Charlotte's talent, is she overpushed? Yeah, yeah. Seth Rollins' talent, is he overpushed? I don't think so, because Seth Rollins has dealt in main card. And Seth Rollins, you know, he may act like a jerk on social media sometimes, but he's pulled his, he's pulled his part. Seth Rollins is great at what he does, and I think that he's gone from a stale 2019, Seth Rollins has really started to feel more important, particularly with the pandemic era in um, WWE. The feud with Rey Mysterio is fantastic. Um, there were different ways that I thought they could have gone with the feud, but they chose to go one way as opposed to another. Sympathy for Eric Young, but you know what? He Slater showed up on Raw, and all of a sudden, next thing we know, he's on Slammiversary. That, maybe, you know what? Maybe TNA starts to make some reference. Maybe TNA starts to get to a point where the relevant again because I heard Slammiversary was great. Now I know some of you watching may be able to tell you tell me the same thing or tell me not. Sanity's good. Good luck for Eric Young that he went to a different promotion. EC3, where the hell's he going? Because we know that he's got more than enough talent. 
EC3, or excuse me, TNA made Ethan Carter, the third, which was his name on TNA, a star. They can't replicate that again? Come on now. Final topic to talk about, Rey Mysterio. Coming close to a WWE contract. Uh, we're going to talk to you about both sides of it. So basically, from what we know, Rey Mysterio worked Extreme Rules not being under contract. Um, they said that Rey Mysterio was working for WWE without a contract. This is from Ringside News. Rey Mysterio was working with WWE without a contract. They had an agreement to continue paying him what he was making in his previous deal. Rey Mysterio wanted more money, but McMahon said no. At this age and point in Rey Mysterio's career, I would say get all the money you can and maximize it all. WWE also, I don't know the truth to this, but reportedly wanted to sign Rey Mysterio to a five-year deal. Rey Mysterio is not signing a five-year deal in any wrestling promotion. Can Rey Mysterio still wrestle? Yeah, but how much does he really have? Is he a full-time performer? We've seen him be full-time recently, but we haven't seen him have other matches, really. So, Rey Mysterio was not getting the money he wanted, and they wanted to sign him long-term, which clearly Rey Mysterio I don't think wanted. Mysterio had a match during the hard show where he lost his eye. There was immediately good news as he was expected that he would regain his vision. It was previously reported that Mysterio was at the headquarters this week where he made headlines. The Wrestling Observer Newsletter noted that WWE and Mysterio are expected to come to a deal, hopefully. The last word is that the sides are not far from a deal, and McMahon and Mysterio will be meeting once again soon to try and finalize things. There are a few reasons why Mysterio would choose to remain with WWE. These are very, very good points. I looked at this article before I actually, uh, before I, uh, whatchamacallit? I looked at this article before I had gone uh, to read it. Sometimes I actually read these articles before I even look at them. Isn't that terrible? Um, he has the ability to help his son Dominic get his foot in the floor, which he did in a big way during his recent storyline. Obviously, we know Dominic is an independent. Um, Dominic actually does wrestle, despite what you may think. Um, so obviously, you know, him being on TV, just being in a storyline would be good for Dominic. He was heavily featured in the build towards the horror show. You never knew if his involvement might become more commonplace in his father's matches if they cannot ink a new deal. I thought, to be honest with you, the best course for them would have been had they had Rey Mysterio not even fight at Extreme Rules. But then again, he had his contract situation, and we don't know much about that. They should have had Dominic get in the ring with Seth Rollins. They should have had an Extreme Rules match. And they should have had Seth Rollins beat the living hell out of Dominic, which would force Rey Mysterio into a, another gimmick match at SummerSlam. What gimmick that is, I'm not quite sure. But it would force him into another gimmick match. Extreme Rules. You can have an Extreme Rules match. You know, I want to make this clear. You can have an Extreme Rules match not at Extreme Rules. Just want to make that clear. And you could have Rey and Seth in some type of gimmick match at SummerSlam, they didn't go that route. They had Rey Mysterio lose, which I did I did think he was going to lose the eye for an eye match. I think a lot of us did. Um, so now they're coming close to a deal. What this deal is, I don't see it being long term. Because you got to think of it this way. The feud with Seth Rollins is fantastic. But the chances of a feud like Rey, of Rey Mysterio having a feud like that was very slim with him coming back. Uh, somehow it fit together perfectly with his son and just everything going on. And the feud between Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio has been fantastic. But when the feud ends, let's say late summer, I don't know how late this feud's going to go. I don't know if I could see this feud going late fall. I don't see the feud going into 2021. They, then what? Seth Rollins can move on and feud with pretty much anybody. We know that. But what does Rey Mysterio do? Is he, what does he do with, you know, his son? What? Those are the questions that I need answers to because people don't realize Rey Mysterio is not signing a five-year deal. I, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. Rey Mysterio has a history of, of plaguing injuries. So if he signs a five-year deal, he wouldn't sign a five-year deal to be a part-timer. That doesn't make sense. He would sign a two-year deal. I could see Rey Mysterio signing a two-year deal. But as a full-timer, I think he would get hurt again. Rey Mysterio's at a point where he's much older. He's got a history of injuries. You know, he's great. One of the greatest ever, but... McMahon's got to give him the money he wants. Because we know Rey Mysterio's worth it. And I don't think it would be a long-term deal. Those are just the things that I think. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe, do everything you got to do. Stay safe.